Good morning, everybody. I'm sorry for the delay in starting. We've got, clearly we have some technical problems, but one of our speakers isn't using technology, for which I'm extremely grateful. So we're going to start with Ala. No, we're not. We're going... No, we're not. We're going to start with Ahmed, yes. who's going to be talking about the, um, the entertainment which DXB offers. So what we're going to do is start with the modern entertainments, go to the Visitor Expo, then go to Wildlife, and then we'll finish by looking at the, at the more traditional experiences of Dubai. So, Ahmed. Thank you so much, Harold. And uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity. Yes, um, I'm not having a presentation, so I wish I would not be really boring, but, but it seems that it's an advantage to be away from that kind of glitches and problems about it. Great. So I think today we, we, we're going to be speaking about the experiential tourism and um, the trend today that everybody is talking about and what we have been experiencing in, in the industry, especially also in the entertainment, but I think across the entire um, ecosystem of everybody working in the tourism industry between hotels and so on is about the experience. Now, we have been recently in a couple of workshops uh, with our uh, uh, partners from DTCM, uh, working with our also partners from the hotels uh, and colleagues from um, other theme parks. What we have been always saying, whenever we want to go to any kind of a, a market for the tourist, marketing Dubai, and, or marketing, and this applies in any other destination in the world, you need to have three elements. The product, which you need to have an exciting product, which we have it in Dubai, and we have plenty of products between Burj Khalifa to Burj Al Arab to every single element. And then you need to have the proper marketing. So the second element is how you market these kind of products that you have it. But the most important third element is the experience. So even if you have the best product and you have the best marketing uh, strategy, what you're going to be missing at the end is that you have to conclude it by having the proper experience when the consumer comes to that destination or that place. So experience, what we see it is overall is the trend. Now, definitely I'm not talking about a certain experience only between culture, between uh, society, if it is uh, uh, a theme park like what we have, if it is a shopping mall, if it is, but the experience itself. And there are a couple of things that has been happening and that proves what we are saying is that Regardless how many virtual reality attractions has happened, a lot of new attractions that are based on technology in, in, in the 21st century, but still people enjoy going fishing, camping, uh, ride a horse, which things that have been happening for the past thousands and thousands of years. And this is because of one thing, is the experience. People are looking for the experience, and the experience is the only thing or the main thing that drives repetitive visitations uh, to the place. Now, I had really uh, interesting chat with, uh, with Nada because I have seen what she is doing, and that's, that's great. I mean, the way how she's getting tourist experience Dubai, like any person who lives in this, in this city can experience it. Go to the Abra, experience what is the creek, and so on. Because it's not about the, the place. It's not about witnessing that one, but it's about the story to tell. I'll give you an example. For example, today we are in Dubai World Trade Center. And for anybody who is not living in Dubai, who pass through the Dubai World Trade Center tower, that is, I think, 32 floors and so on. Nice white building and that passed. But if you listen, and if I am a tourist, and somebody s stays with me for 10 minutes to tell me a story about it, what is behind it, that this has been the highest tower in the entire Middle East a couple of years back. This has been built by this uh, date. X number of workers have been working there. His Highness Sheikh Rashid has had this kind of a project as one of the anchor projects to start the economy of Dubai. That this has been the place where majority of the embassies and the concerts have been there. And then they take me to a certain place where they have been signed the first thing. And so again, this is the experience, right? This is what our people are looking for. If I want to go as well to a certain uh, place, is the experience. Now, in our theme parks and Dubai parks and resorts, this is what we have been focusing on and we are still having a lot of things to do and we are working on is about how 
I can include the experience element in every single touch point for the consumer from the time that he hears about me on a certain advertisement, how he can customize his ticket and visit to a certain way, and then when he enters there, how he can be part of the show. So if I have a dancing show, how can I be part of that? Especially in Dubai, what we are trying to do is we are being famous of having a lot of nationalities and multicultural players and so on. And this is, by the way, this is a huge advantage that you can test different cultures in a single day in Dubai between an Indian culture or a Levant or the local or the Emirati, the European, a certain place. And, and the amount of nationalities that you have it here within, uh, let's say, uh, maybe 100 square meter, I can really tell you that you would be easily finding not less than 40 or 50 nationalities in that kind of a space. And this is only in Dubai. And every single person has something to give for the person. Now, I don't want to take it too long because I want to give a space for my colleagues. I think that they are much better than me in speaking that especially for Nada and uh, the team. So, yeah, this is my opinion. It's focusing on experience, experience. Experience is the one that drives repetitive visitation and extending the stay for our tourists. Ahmed, thank you. One of the challenges, I think, and we'll perhaps return to it in the questions at the end, is how you make it different for different people. Because I remember I used to tour lead in the Soviet Union. Um, we would go to Leningrad, and if you had an American guide, they would tell you how much the bell weighed and how big it was and how many people it took to, to make it. If you went with somebody who was used to working with English groups, they would tell you about the history of the bell and... Um, why it was created and so on. And one of the challenges, I think, for any destination is to deal with the different source markets who are often looking for different things. But let's come back to that, because I think it's a challenge for each of the experiences that we're talking about. So we're going to go to the Expo 2020 now with, with Ala El Shrugi. And we'll see if the film works at the end. Does this work? Can you hear me? Great. I've been told that I'm soft-spoken, so if you can't hear me, somebody signal, indicate. Um, so, Expo 2020 is like the biggest project in Dubai that nobody really knows about. So, I'm going to start by telling you a little bit about Expos in general, World Expos specifically. So, what kind of visitors, what kind of visitation can we expect? Some people think it's a couple of, it's a few hundred visitors, a few thousand visitors maybe. It's tens of millions of visitors. From the first World Expo in 1851 in London, it attracted six million people in London before air travel, when cars were still a glimmer in somebody's eye. Six million people showed up. These numbers go up and up and up. We're expecting 25 million visitors to come to Dubai. 70% of those are international, 70%. Just by way of comparison, the Shanghai World Expo had 6% international visitation. So when we say, what is the impact on travel and tourism? It's enormous, it's 25 million people coming. Um, so what's the big deal? What's the big attraction? One element of expos that has always been in the DNA is iconic architecture, and my colleague Ahmed mentioned earlier the impact of architecture, the stories behind architecture. And we're familiar with iconic architecture. Burj Khalifa attracted almost two million people last year alone. So if we look at the expo architecture, a lot of it stays into legacy. Not only does it stay into legacy, it becomes synonymous with the cities in which the buildings reside. So if I say Paris, you think Eiffel Tower. Well, the Eiffel Tower was the entrance to the Paris Expo in 1878. It's still there. It's still iconic. People walked up almost 2,000 steps before the lift was put in. Because if you went to the tallest tower in the world at the time, you wanted a bird's eye view before airplanes, when there was no such thing as a bird's eye view. So these buildings are incredible. They are phenomenal, they last. Uh, the, the Seattle Space Needle is another one. I could go on and on, but I won't for the sake of time. Um, some of us that live and work in the UAE will recognize the UAE Pavilion from Shanghai. 
These are so monumental that they move to their home country, and many of them are reinstalled. Ours is in Sadiat Island, um, on the cultural district. So just to give a little bit of background on the UAE's participation in expos, the UAE has been participating in the World Expo since before it was a country, since 1970 in Osaka. This is not new that we're participating in the expo, but it's enormous that we're hosting the World Expo for the first time in the Middle East, Africa, and South Asia, the first time ever. So that's a huge honor. So what can visitors expect? The expo has always been about reveals, firsts. Um, and uh, the first expo in 1851 showed people during the Industrial Revolution what an enormous textile loom looks like, what a steel ma manufacturing engine looks like in the middle of the Industrial Revolution, which was reflecting the essence of its time. Ever since then, um, the expo has been about first, and there's a huge list, and I strongly encourage everybody to take a look at this and just do a quick Google search and see what was first revealed at the expo. It's an enormous list. So we've got the escalator, um, uh, electricity, ketchup, uh, Quaker oats. It's, it's bizarre things that, are, that seem innocuous now, but you've also got um, the television, the Ferris wheel, the first Skype call was not in, you know, 2003. It was in 1967 at an expo. So this is a, it's, it's a huge part of the DNA of what an expo is. And again, expo shows us the future while reflecting the times. As was mentioned and is the focus of this panel, the times are about experiences. So what kind of experiences can we expect at an expo? If we look at the Shanghai Expo, the UK pavilion was called the Seed Cathedral. There were 250,000 seeds that you could walk through and immerse yourself in. Um, if we go on to Brazil, this isn't about firsts necessarily. This is about a new way to experience public space. It's new, it's different, it's an immersive experience. People came together, this place was packed. Um, so, what can we expect at Expo 2020? Well, it's a festival. There's an enormous level of programming that runs across the board, from fine arts to music to performances. We keep saying Beyonce. We really hope Beyonce comes. Um, arts and culture, health and wellness, literature. I can go on and on. It's everything. It's a celebration. It's a festival. It's a fair. It's not a dry educational experience. It's, it's really beautiful. And if we look at the site itself, um, it's quite iconic and it's enormous. It's, it's nearly 4.4 square kilometers. And it, it, if you see, it's kind of sectioned off into petals. And you can take a look at our, our model at our booth. But uh, the, the petals represent sorry, the petals represent the, uh, the sub-themes of the expo. So our overarching theme is connecting minds, creating the future. Our sub-themes are mobility, sustainability, and opportunity. So these are our hero pavilions. And you can see the UAE pavilion in the center there. Um, and to the left of the UAE pavilion is Al Wasl Plaza, which is, uh, whoops, sorry, wrong order. So Al Wasl Plaza is an enormous dome that's 150 meters wide by 67 meters high, and it's a performance dome. So projections will be running through this thing. It's, it's an event space that's the heart of the district. And so Al Wasl actually is the old name of Dubai. I don't know if many people know that, but it means the connection. So connecting minds, creating the future, going back to the heritage of Dubai and its old name, Al Wasl. That's the heart of the expo site. I skipped over this very quickly. This is the UAE pavilion, which takes the shape of a falcon in flight. And it's, the building itself is an experience because this is it when it's open with its wings sort of up, but the wings come down as well. So you can imagine a, a bird in flight. Phenomenal building. And um, you can see, um, sorry, you can see that it's, a Calatrava building. So this is a Starkitect. All of our buildings 
we're blessed to have, you know, um, the best and brightest around the world. The mobility pavilion kind of looks like mobility itself. It looks like it's moving. Um, and the experience takes you through these three petals in a very unique way that we can't talk about yet. Um, <laughs> the sustainability pavilion is designed by Grimshaw Architects. It lives sustainability. It is sustainability. It's a lead platinum building. It generates its own en energy. You can't see from here, but you'll see a little bit later. The building is covered in solar panels. So it's generating its own energy and it's pulling water from these shading trees, um, uh, transforming water from the humidity in the air to be used in the building. It's, it's incredible. And this is actually a children's exploratorium and we're going against our sort of, we don't share. I'm gonna take you through the sustainability pavilion at a very high level. So the sustainability pavilion is two journeys. So again, the building is round. You can go one way or the other. If you go one way, you're under the ocean. If you go the other way, you're under the forest. So we'll start with the forest. In the forest, what we don't realize is there's a wood wide web. Just like the world wide web of the internet, the roots of the trees connect. They talk to each other. So again, this is a children's exploratorium. It's an enormously immersive experience. So you are under the forest and you see the roots connecting to each other. You activate the space as you go through it. But trees are very interesting creatures. We think about them as static, but if Tamara is over there, is the tree over there and she's not feeling very well and she needs nutrition, and I'm a tree over here and I'm doing okay, I actually can send her nutrients. And if she doesn't like me very much, she can send evil things my way. They're actually interesting creatures. We don't think about them that way, but this is the first part of the experience. The second part of the experience is under the ocean. So we can look at the madness of our behavior and our overconsumption and see that this is what we're doing. The, what you see in, in the mouth of this enormous anglerfish is trash. It's junk from the oceans that ends up in our ecosystem and actually the food that we eat. So it kind of comes back to haunt us. So the pavilion takes you through, this is the beauty of the world. This is how we're kind of destroying it. And it ends with sort of a ooh, hope for the future. Reset. Um, I'll, if I may, uh, so this is hope for the future. If I may, I'll show you a quick video about where we are. So this is the Wassel Plaza. This will be the metro line that runs right into the expo. You can see we're already well underway. I don't know why it's skipping around like that. This is the Mobility Pavilion District. Sustainability. That's our experience. Thank you very much. That sustainability panel is indeed, sorry, pavilion is indeed exciting. And it'll be open for six months. I think we'll go next to, given that we've just been through the, the, um, the web of the forest, let's go to WWF next and then we'll come back. Sorry, okay, we'll do Nada. Come and do Wanda. Wonder with Nada. No, no, we're up. Come and do it. No, no, all is organized chaos today. You have 10 minutes, okay? I'll set this. Is there a clock? And can I use the microphone? Because yeah. it might just be a bit. Hello? Hello? Yes. All right. Everyone can hear me? Wonderful. Good morning, everyone. My name is Nada, and I am a strategy professional turned wanderer. In 2016, I founded a tourism company in Dubai called Wander With. What I provide are cultural and educational adventures here in the city 
that are designed to enrich people's travels. Now, before I tell you a little bit more about the company, I'd like to tell you a little story about the inspiration behind the company. In 2011, I was planning a trip to Italy. And I was going to stay there for a few weeks, so I did all my research, read every single guidebook there was, I spoke to every Italian person I knew so that I could ask them for recommendations about where to go, what to do, where to eat, because I wanted to have an authentic and local experience. For accommodation, I decided to skip the hotels. And instead, I decided to rent a room with an Italian woman who was kind enough to share her home. Maria spoke no English, and I spoke no Italian. So you can imagine how our conversations went. Now, a few weeks later, I returned to Dubai, practically in tears, because I had just had one of the most incredible experiences of my entire life. In just a few weeks, I had learned so much about the country, so much about the culture, so much about the people and had made lifetime friends. In fact, my last conversation with Maria was about the Berlusconi trial in broken Italian. And today I am proud to say that I make a terrific tiramisu. And so those are the experiences that will forever stage my view of the world. And those are the experiences that I intend to show to Dubai's many guests. I offer unforgettable experiences through cultural and educational tours here in the city with the local. And what I intend to do is inspire Dubai's many visitors to go beyond the skyscrapers, beyond the malls, and to really ingrain in them a sense of discovery, a spirit of discovery. And what I mean by that is discovery of new sites, discovery of the culture, discovery of people, and most importantly, discovering themselves and what they're capable of doing. And so I wanted them to go back home with not just photos and memories, but actual interactions and the steps or whatever that they would leave behind, the marks. And so whether it's a guest that's coming here to Dubai for just a few hours in transit, or is here for several days, I want to take them on experiences. And the experiences that I have designed are varied and touch on a wide variety of topics so that I could cover all interests. One of my experiences focuses on the cultural side of the city in Old Town, Dubai. And that's definitely one of the most popular. I also introduce guests to the art scene, the thriving art scene here in Dubai, which if you've you know, paid attention to, has been booming in the last several years. I also want to educate people about doing business here in the city. So in fact, educating individuals, educating university students and businesses about what it takes to be successful here in the city. And finally, I also introduce them to life in the desert. Desert experiences, teaching them what it was like to be a true Bedouin. Now, all of these experiences that I've put together are not just about the sites. They're not just about going there, seeing those, you know, attractions. It's about hearing the many stories that often go untold, conserving them. It's also about meaningful connections, providing visitor interactions with locals that will help bridge geopolitical divides. It's also about fostering understanding debunking myths and misconceptions that many, many people have about this region. 
And finally, it's also about leaving an impact, a socio-cultural impact. We are, of course, in the homes of people. We are in their homelands. We're getting to know more about them and their ways of life. So it's only right that we give back to them. And that is how we contribute, by allowing them to share their passions and their enthusiasm for where they live. And that kind of passion and enthusiasm is contagious. It's something that you'll bring with you back home. And that's why I believe that a single brief experience can forever change and shape people's lives. Now, experiential purposes are, of course, quite different than regular products. Because with a product, I mean, when you go and buy a product, there is only so much that you can squeeze out of it after you've covered the basic needs. Afterwards, you really will find no value or no happiness. But with experiential purpose purchases, that happiness and utility is unlimited. It is also the case that exper experiential tourism is gaining fast momentum. Travel is expanding way beyond rest and relaxation. While people will still want to do the classic attractions, like visiting the Eiffel Tower or the Burj Khalifa, they want to do way more than that. They also want to focus more on adventure, on education, and even personal growth. And with regards to Dubai, we of course know Dubai is a city that is not short of visitors. It has, in the last year, attracted almost 16 million international guests alone. It is also intending to attract 20, and from what I hear, 25 million visitors by 2020 in celebration of the World Expo a mega event. But what's important to note is the average length of people's stays, which are 3.5 nights. That's quite short, I would say. If someone's flying all the way over here, it's a quite short you know, amount of time to spend. And that's why we need to focus on increasing people's average length of stays. And we do that, of course, by enriching their experiences. Now, with Dubai, Dubai needs to definitely focus its marketing efforts on certain attributes or elements. And those include things like cultural experiences, cultural heritage, people, nature, and even sustainability. Because it is those elements that will attract people that will ensure that they stay for longer periods of time and eventually repeat behavior and recommendation intentions. And so it's meaningful experiences like those that I wish to provide to people that I hope will attract people to come to visit, to the, to visit Dubai and to also pay our thanks to the people here who are allowing us into their homelands and sharing their culture with us. Thank you. Th thanks very much indeed, Nada. I'm looking forward to having the experience with you tonight. Oh. Yes, we are doing a tour later this afternoon. No, we'll go to questions in a moment. I think that led on quite nicely yeah, to see. the question of how we get some of the wildlife elements in to the program for tourists. And it's still, in my experience, very difficult to access the marine and terrestrial wildlife experiences that this region has to offer, particularly if you're only staying for 3.5 nights. But Tamara, talk to us about what's possible. Okay, can I borrow your mic? Harold, can I borrow your mic? Okay. Hi. So as Harold mentioned, my name is uh, Tamara Withers. I'm the Corporate uh, Sustainability Senior Manager at an organization called Emirates Wildlife Society. 
we work here in the UAE where a local nonprofit organization uh, that works in association with the Worldwide Fund for Nature, or WWF. We are here quite simply to conserve UAE's natural heritage. Uh, we've been here for about 17 years. We are a science-based organization. We conduct original research. We do policy recommendations. We work with the private sector and government quite closely to advance uh, solutions to conservation. And we also have a strong element of, of course, education and awareness. Um, just to give you a little background about uh, some of the areas that we work on here, climate change and energy, marine and terrestrial conservation, and wildlife trade. As you can imagine, um, these areas have significant environmental challenges, and it's not one that any organization uh, can solve. We need partnerships and innovative partnerships, and we have been uh, working to engage the tourism sector here over the last several years. We are uh, one of the founding members of the Dubai Sustainable Tourism Initiative with Dubai Tourism, um, and developing partnership with hotels and tour operators uh, across the country. Uh, we feel that uh, tourism is quite important to what we do, not, in term, not only in terms of reducing the impact of the industry as a whole, but also reaching people and individuals um, to, so that they can uh, understand more about the environmental challenges and how they can be part of the solution. So uh, I've been, uh, we all mentioned, I think, a little bit element of technology. Um, and technology is a blessing and a curse. Uh, the blessing in some ways, it's easier to keep in touch with people a uh, long ways away, reducing uh, paper, you know, using emails, but it's uh, definitely a, a curse in terms of it's disconnected us in some ways, disconnected us personally to ourselves and even that face-to-face -face with others. And um, coupled with moving into cities, we're becoming disconnected with nature. Um, and this is something that we, I think Nada talked about. People are looking for experiences and experiences to reconnect. And I believe nature is one of those uh, experiences that help people uh, reconnect uh, with things that they're finding missing in their lives as it becomes more technology uh, driven. Um, you mentioned myths about uh, people, what people expect when they come here in the UAE. And, and not just for what you do, but also in what I do is that people think, oh, you're in a desert. There's nothing here to see or do. That could not be further from the truth about what UAE is in terms of in their environment. We have multiple different types of ecosystems from the coast to the sea, mountains, freshwater wadis, um, and in addition to the desert. There is a lot uh, out there. We're still discovering more. Just the other uh, week or the other month, our researchers discovered in one of the wadis um, an Arabian owl that was the first time ever seen here in the UAE. There's a lot we don't know, but there's a lot we do know and a lot for visitors to come and see and do while they visit us. We have beautiful species like the caracal, the Arabian red fox, the Arabian oryx, dugongs. We have one of the largest uh, populations of dugongs in the entire world. Beautiful species like whale sharks. We have eight different types of dolphins and endemic species such as the tar. We're also blessed with being on a migratory route for birds. There are hundreds and hundreds of birds you could see at different times of the year. There's a huge opportunity here that I believe that we're missing out in terms of experiencing the UAE. The environment, as you talked about in nature, has been a part of the Bedouin culture for years, since, the UAE, since before the UAE was actually UAE. It was part of their economy in terms of pearling and fishing. They lived off the lands in terms of dates, building their baskets from the palm weaves. There is a lot to experience nature through the culture uh, here in the UAE. We want to um, leverage these diverse experiences. It's an untapped opportunity still here. We do have some things that are coming out that are called ecotourism, but just because you're in the environment or in nature doesn't make it ecotourism. So this area still needs to uh, be de uh, developed. We need to change the experiences that are happening here. A lot of visitors, yes, come for the experience, you know, for shopping and dining and experiencing the iconic architecture here. We need to diversify still those experiences. 
One, so that those visitors keep coming back again and again or lengthen their stays. We want repeat visitors here to the UAE. And by adding a new experiences, they'll be able to have different experiences each time they come. We also want to attract new visitors. And by adding an element of nature-based tourism or experience, this will attract new visitors here to the UAE as well. And I really hope with Dubai Expo, and you were mentioning, that is going to see igniting people's interest and passion for the environment who might not have been exposed. And we want to take them from you and actually get them out there into nature. Um, in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, nature experiences, it's very important to remember, and we've all mentioned the word authenticity. We want people to come here and have an authentic experience to have life-changing experiences, personal experiences when they're engaging with nature and in the environment here. And I think it's also important to highlight, while it's very multicultural here, which is a, a, a unique aspect to the UAE, I think it's important to remember about engaging local culture and the local population um, and doing that through nature, which was so embedded in their culture, is very important. Getting to know the Emiratis, where they come from, how they see the world, I think can deepen visitors' experiences here. People no longer want to come and just watch. People want to come do. So let's get them out there with Nada, what Nada's doing and into the desert to experience that Bedouin culture, to understand the importance of things like what falconry pay, played in their role and why conserving the falcon is very important. So at EWS, I've spent, or in my career, I've spent, you know, we've got to change people's minds about the economic value of conserving nature. Give them the business case. And year after year, we've tried to develop the business case. We have great international business cases, and we've developed local business cases. And today, or not today, but this year, I kind of threw up my hands going, enough with the business case. It, it, it's not enough. We're not convincing people with the business case. It's not about numbers. We can have that, and that's still important. But we need to inspire and develop passionate people about the environment. And then they'll listen to the business case. The business case is just going to tip them over. But really, they need to have that passion and inspiration ignited. And we need to do that through experiences in nature, getting, out them, getting them out there to see the wonder of nature. But we have to consider some things in doing this. Like Harold's always uh, reminding us that this is a largely undeveloped part of the UAE. Um, we need to see it develop, but we need to consider um, some things. One, we need more of the infrastructure in place. We have a lot of protected areas, you'd be surprised. But we need help from the government and private sector to develop the infrastructure properly, keeping sustainability in mind, so we can create more destinations. We need accessibility to some of these sites. Authenticity, um, as was I already mentioned. We need high quality offerings that can be personalized. Um, and then the other thing we were talking about before, just uh, briefly before we started our panel, was the need to enable visitors to find them. What are the avenues that we can uh, reach the visitors here in the UAE so that they know about, uh, they can have these environments? And most importantly, it's not just about coming and experiencing, right? We need to engage with the visitors so they become passionate about the issues and they want to go home and conserve the environment and give back to the environment by financially donating or changing the way uh, they're living their lives to reduce their impact on the environment. And I think the environmental experiences here in the UAE are quite unique. Uh, things that you'll be able to experience here that you're not going to be able to experience other places in the world. I think there's some great things that are already uh, put into place um, that could be evolved into more genuine and authentic experiences um, that we haven't yet seen before. And that this is an area that, you know, with Dubai Tourism and other tourism authorities here, there's a lot of uh, um, opportunity still to happen. Thank you. Thanks, for, thanks very much indeed, Tamara. What, in your experience, how easy is it to find these experiences? It should be on. Oh, yes, yeah, now on. Well, I've already stated that it's it, for environmental experiences, I, I, it's near to impossible. Uh, you have some mangrove experiences. Um, I can't name the desert safaris only because there's not that element of environmental education nor authenticity oftentimes. But um, 
it's like I said, we need the infrastructure. We need help in developing these areas. I think we're starting to see that happen with Dubai Conservation Reserve, and Al Marmoum is going to also be, at least here in the Emirate of Dubai, a good opportunity. Uh, but we need to continue to develop them. And, and while we're developing them, we need to remember that we actually need to conserve nature in the meantime, so there's actually something there to go see. Ahmed, you've probably got more experience of selling experiences in Dubai, your company, than anyone else. I mean, do you have a view about whether this is possible or are we kidding ourselves? Yeah, definitely it is possible. Now, I like the word which is authenticity. <clears throat> Um, experience nowadays, l let me tell you something about the theme parks, for example. What are the things that we are facing as a challenge this uh, time? The theme park culture itself is new for this region, right? It's a side that like what's happening in the West. So it is very common in Europe or in the US, if you go to Orlando, that people or families, they, 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 they schedule their vacations around the theme park at a stay for four or five days. But here in this region, it is still not, not that much. So what we are trying to do is that to provide that kind of experience. Now, if I see experience of being there, I will give you an, a, a certain small story. Um, for my first time, I have been to London. In my last day staying there, I wanted to buy some certain gift for my mother. And I have been in Oxford Street. It took me three hours going back and forth in the Oxford Street trying to find a single shop that it is authentic or we don't have it in Dubai. And unfortunately, it was so difficult. And after three hours, I went to through a place or another place until I found a small shop who was selling, you know, the teapots. And I was so happy. I selected a couple of things. The lady was wrapping it for me. At the time when I paid, I was asking her, so you are the only shop in London? She said, yes, but we have another shop in Dubai. And I was like, oh my God. Okay. Now, but the best experience I have been there, there was, and I say, I, I can't remember what it was the countryside. There was something called Warwick Castle. It's kind of a castle in, in, in UK, in England. And it has been converted. It's a historical one. And it has been converted to be a destination to be visited. Right. And I like the company that was Merlin who was driving that. They were getting the kids to experience and to act on how in the previous centuries were attacking the castles, how they are shouting and they are talking, dressing and so on. They're bringing the kids and their families to really be part of the show. I myself have enjoyed it. That, that was kind of an experience, is, 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 is the authenticity. I think still things can happen in Dubai much more, but we need to work closer with the DMCs. Tamara says something today People who come to Dubai, the first thing they know about it is the desert safari. But if you go to the desert safari, you don't get that kind of experience about what is the desert, how they are doing it, and so on. Now, the commercial element and the financial benefit and the profit is very important, but we need to have it in a way that also markets Dubai and to have the person who has visited Dubai to go back and to have a proper word of mouth about experiencing Middle East, the Arabic, uh, you know, nation and the culture as well. Thank, thanks for that. What about the expo? Is it going to help with this, do you think? Um, hello? Is it on? Can you hear me? Okay. So um, it's, it's definitely part of our mission to make a difference and highlight, I mean, it's one of our themes. Sustainability is one of our sub-themes. So it's, it's definitely a focus for us. And, and the whole point of the expo is, like I said, is to be a mirror of our times, to reflect what we're doing. And that's why in the sustainability pavilion, we say, this is what we're doing, but this is the hope for the future. So we offer that opportunity for change. We offer that space to make a difference. And if I could just make another comment about authenticity. And, and I love the fact that your tours are sort of wander with a local. Um, and you had mentioned the importance of understanding the environment through a local's perspective. So what we've done to make sure this incredibly um, international event is has the local uh, feel and the authenticity is we have 30,000 volunteers from the UAE walking people through, welcoming people at the expo. They're the people that you interact with. So they're not, 
they, they're from here, they're proud. Um, and so we try and instill that even in a very global context. We've learned, we've learned how that important that is really since the Sydney Olympics. I want to be slightly controversial though, in the sense that I went for a long walk around the Mall, the Dubai Mall, um, when I arrived. And for the first time, I saw large groups of tourists being hurried through by their tour leader with their umbrella or their number. Now, I'd not seen that in the Dubai Mall before, but somehow the Dubai Mall has become somewhere that groups of tourists are taken through for an experience of Dubai. So I think it's a bit odd. Who has a question? Then may I ask you, do you think it's odd that tourists are doing that? Uh, if I can just speak to that, I think Dubai is a place of superlatives. So the biggest, the best, the coolest, the longest, the tallest. And Dubai Mall has quite a reputation and it's great. It's great that people want to go, uh, people who are exposed to malls all over the world. It's not something new, a mall, but Dubai Mall is new. Dubai Mall is different. We have to go, and a lot of people tick that box. But I think when they go to Dubai Mall, what we need to ensure they do is they go outside Dubai Mall, and Dubai Mall gives you the, the uh, just sort of a peek into what's available in the UAE, but from an experience perspective, I think people like to tick a box. Uh, I don't think it's bad that, that people want to go to the mall. It, it, it attracts a certain type of visitor, but I think we need to educate visitors that there's much more, and this speaks to everything that's been mentioned on this panel, is that it's not just a buy mall. So we need to reach the person with the flag to say, after you're done with the mall, go have a real experience that's genuine and authentic. I completely understand that people want to do the mall, and, and I certainly enjoy it as well. What is strange about that, though, as an experience, is that those tourists going through in a group are not going to be doing any shopping. They're just rushing through, in a sense, creating congestion, which is then a problem for their Marathis who are there wanting to shop. And I think that's a there's a potential conflict of interest in that relationship. Zadra, you want to comment? Yeah, I have that. Yeah. Uh, so to just add to that, I think uh, one of the key things that I think we should all be looking at as well is overcrowding, potential overcrowding of certain areas. There are certain sites around Dubai that are almost always empty. And then you have Dubai Mall, which is almost always full. And so there needs to be a, a balance. People need to start looking into these other sites. Attractions need to start marketing their sites better so that there's a balance between the two. And then the customer experience is then improved, right? Because that's the overall objective, is to improve the customer experience and to educate them. And that can be done in other sites, but there needs to be a good enough reason for them to do so as well. And that's when these companies and those attractions need to make the efforts on their part as well. Is there a final question from the audience? In that case, if I may, I'd like you to just thank our speakers. I'm sorry for the rather confused beginning, but I think we've had four really excellent presentations. So if you would thank them in the normal way, I'd be grateful. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs>